Japan is far ahead of other countries in terms of cultural progress. It goes above and beyond what anyone could have expected. It doesn't matter if it's their delicious food, amazing places to visit, fun things to do, or technological advances. Over the years, Japan has built a name for itself as a place where you can find and see things you have never seen in any other country. The Japanese are definitely leaders in many areas, and in almost every way, they are better than other countries. Here are 15 things that only happen in Japan that are very strange. Number 15. Cat Cafes Here's a look at the wonderful world of cat cafes. In these one-of-a-kind coffee shops, you can have a great time and hang out with cute cats. Imagine drinking your favorite drink while cats run around you and play. There are cat cafes in a lot of big cities, but they aren't always easy to find because they are usually on the upper floors of buildings. In Japan, cat cafes are very popular right now. It can be hard to have a pet in a busy city because there isn't much space, rental agreements are strict, and people are always on the go. Because of this, both locals and tourists who love cats love going to these cafes. Usually you don't need to make a reservation, but for the more popular ones, it's a good idea to call ahead. Just remember that most places only let people in who are at least 13 years old. Now let's talk about how things will work. Each cat cafe has its own rules, but here are some that most of them have in common. You can pet the cats as much as you want, but you can't pick them up unless they ask to be picked up. It's important to not give the cats any food from outside. Oh, and remember to bring your camera. It's fine to take pictures of the cute cats and the cozy cafe, but please don't use flash photography. So whether you're a local who wants to hang out with cats or a tourist who wants to do something different, cat cafes are the perfect place to go. Number 14. Japan's public baths, called Sento, have been around for a long time. During the Edo period, when there weren't many places to take a private bath, public baths were built in places where there weren't many private baths. This practice is still done today. When you go to a sento, you will see many different shapes and sizes. Some are modern and luxurious, while others are comfortable and have a vintage look. Some bathhouses have paintings that show important places. Men and women have their own places to bathe inside. In a dressing room, you can put your things in lockers or other places set aside for that purpose. In contrast to hot springs, Sento usually doesn't have soap or towels, so you'll need to either rent a towel and bring your own soap or bring your own towel. The shower is where the bathing process starts. Each shower stall has a stool and a bucket. You splash yourself with warm water and scrub. Be careful not to splash other people. After that, you can go into the baths, but don't throw your towel in. Put it on your head or set it down. It's important to remember that kids shouldn't bring toys into the tub and shouldn't splash. At first, public bathhouses in Japan may seem strange, but once you get used to them, they can be a lot of fun. It can even be refreshing to take a bath with a friendly stranger. Number 13. Watermelons shaped like cubes. Square or cube watermelons are a unique type of watermelon grown in Japan that stands out. In 1978, a graphic designer named Tomoyuki Ono came up with them. They quickly became popular. The main reasons for their strange shape are that it is useful and looks good. When compared to round watermelons, cube watermelons are made to fit more easily in refrigerators. Their square shape keeps them from rolling, so they can be stacked neatly and make good use of space. Also, their shape makes them easier to cut because they don't move around on the table. This makes them safer and more convenient. But there are some bad things about these strange fruits. These watermelons are picked long before their sweet taste can develop. Also, because they are so rare, they can cost as much as $1.200 each because they are so hard to find. So these watermelons are seen as a luxury fruit instead of one that is easy to enjoy. Since cube watermelons came out, other shapes have come out, like heart-shaped and pyramid-shaped watermelons. This makes shopping for fruit even more fun. Also, these unique watermelons are no longer just found in Japan. You can now find them in other places like Germany. Number 12. Vending machines everywhere. When you first arrive in Japan, particularly in Tokyo, one of the first things you notice is the abundance of vending machines strewn throughout the streets. While vending machines aren't uncommon in Japan, the sheer amount of them here is astounding. More than 2 million of the country's 4 million vending machines are dedicated to selling beverages. 
But it's not only the numbers that are surprising, it's also the breadth of the options. Vending machines provide odd goodies such as maize, sweet bean soup, shrimp broth, and even Indian curry in addition to the standard water, coffee, and soda. Moreover, throughout the winter, these machines provide hot alternatives such as soothing soups. While drinks dominate the vending machine landscape, the other half of these marvelous contraptions offer an assortment of goods. From ice cream and snacks to frozen ramen and gyoza, you'll encounter vending machines that go beyond your expectations. Fruit vending machines featuring items like bananas, pineapple sachets, and chopped apples have gained popularity too. Some vendors even choose to sell both drinks and snacks in their machines. Of course, we can't forget the tobacco vending machines, a reflection of Japan's high smoking rate. It is intriguing, however, that these machines, along with those dispensing alcoholic beverages, lack age verification despite Japan's strict regulations on drinking and smoking for minors. Japan's vending machine culture is a testament to the country's innovation. It offers an enchanting glimpse into the abundance and diversity of products available at your fingertips. Number 11. Shokuhin Sampuru Shokuhin Sampuru are plastic models of food that Japanese restaurants use to show off their food and attract customers. Polyvinyl chloride is used to make these replicas by hand. They look like real food and are made of plastic, wax, or resin. In the late 1800s, when real food displays were used instead of written menus, this custom began. In the 1920s, people started making models of food to help customers decide what to order. Today, Japan's plastic food industry brings in billions of yen every year. The models are very flexible and can be changed to show specific details and regional differences. Some restaurants pay more than a million yen for a full set of plastic items that will last forever. These models are also sold to the general public in Tokyo's kitchen town. Shokuhin Sampuru has become an art form, and museums and competitions show off how well it is done. Not only are they used in restaurants, but they are also used as props in movies and TV shows. They are also used to teach people about nutrition and consumer research. Shokuhin Sampuru is not only used in restaurants, but also at weddings, where elaborately decorated fake wedding cakes are put on display while real cake slices are served. These models have become an important part of Japan's food culture and marketing strategies. They show customers what the food looks like and draw them in. Number 10. Washlets. Get ready to be blown away by Japan's high-tech toilets, which they call washlets. These toilets from the future are full of cool features that will blow your mind. Imagine if your toilet could spray water on your behind. Set the temperature of the water to how you like it. Put out nice smells and even play soothing sounds to drown out any other noises. These washlets are so much better than anything else on the market. Don't be scared by how advanced their technology is. Once you know a few simple tricks, they are pretty easy to use. All you have to do is press the buttons on either side of the toilet. And there, you're good to go. And if you can't reach the control pad on the toilet, don't worry. Uh, there's convenient remote control pad on the wall. In fact, smart toilets have become so popular in Japan that in 2018, the Japan Sanitary Equipment Industry Association had to make standard symbols for the buttons on these toilets so that tourists wouldn't get confused. So common and high-tech are these washlets in Japan. It's interesting to think that Japan has become a center of innovation for toilets around the world. Scientists think that the traditional Japanese squat toilet, called a washiki, is actually better for our health. Before Western toilets took over, these squat toilets were the norm in Japan for thousands of years. But don't be afraid. In many public bathrooms in Japan, you can still use a washiki toilet. So the next time you go to Japan, don't miss out on the chance to use a washlet. Number 9. Butler Cafes As an alternative to maid cafes, where waitresses dress up as maids and serve men, butler cafes became popular. Some female anime and manga fans who are called otaku didn't like the idea of maid cafes and wanted something else. They wanted a place where they could hang out with other men in a safe and romantic setting without having to spend a lot of money. In 2005, Swallowtail, the first butler cafe, opened its doors. Since it was in Tokyo, a lot of female otaku went there. Butler's Cafe, which is also well-known, hired Western men to work as butlers so that customers could practice their English while having fun. Butler cafes focus on making sure their customers have a great time. 
They pay a lot of attention to the atmosphere and make you feel like you're coming home to a fancy mansion. As soon as you walk in, you'll be treated with respect and called names like Milady, Princess, Young Lord, or Master. The food at these cafes is delicious and is made with the utmost care. You can have a traditional English afternoon tea with delicious cakes, scones, sandwiches, and of course tea served in beautiful porcelain cups. The inside of the cafe is made to look like a beautiful English manor or country house with beautiful furniture and decorations. The butlers themselves have been taught a lot about how to make tea. Restaurant service that goes above and beyond. They take their job seriously and do their best to make sure you have a great time. Some butlers even take part in the cafe's musicals, plays, and concerts. One thing to remember is that most butler cafes don't let you take pictures. But some coffee shops, like Butler's Cafe, offer special photo services so that you can remember special times with your butler. Imagine having a picture of your butler lifting you up or getting bubbles, a tiara, and a silver bell like Cinderella. At Butler Cafes, both the staff and the customers have to follow a set of rules. They want to make sure everyone feels safe and respected. Most of the time, you can't do things like meet outside the cafe or share personal information. So if you want a magical dining experience and a taste of what it's like to be rich, you should go to a butler cafe. Number 8. Capsule Hotels Have you ever heard of people staying in hotels with only one room? Because that's exactly what a capsule hotel, also called a pod hotel in Japan, has to offer, but with everything you need. The first of these unique hotels, which are also called pod hotels, opened in Japan. Now they can be found all over the world. They give travelers who don't need a big, fancy room a really cool and cheap option. What is a capsule hotel, then? You don't get a normal hotel room. Instead, you get your own cozy pod that's just the size of a single bed. It's almost like having your own secret place. There is everything you need for a peaceful stay inside the capsule. It's like a mini modern cabin with a TV for entertainment, air conditioning, a video game console, and plugs to charge your devices. Want to know how capsules are put in? So, one on top of the other. Yes, you did hear correctly. Each one is put on top of the other. Now you might be wondering what will happen if you choose to stay in one of the best ones. Don't worry. The people who made it knew it was for a person, so the top ones have ladders or steps to get to them. You can even close the pod off with a curtain or a solid door if you want to be alone. Man, that's cool. But remember that only the inside can be locked. Let's move on to the best part. You might be wondering where you can take a shower or go to the bathroom if you need to. So there are shared facilities like showers and toilets, as well as free Wi-Fi. Some capsule hotels, like hostels, even have free saunas and baths. Some places even have pools and fun things to do for you. There are different kinds and sizes of capsule hotels with anywhere from 50 to 700 pods. Men like them more than women do, though. Some hotels have rooms or floors for women only. When you get there, you'll trade in your usual clothes and shoes for a yukata and slippers. Don't worry about the things you own. They can be put in lockers or room safes to keep them safe. What do you like best? The cost of a night at a capsule hotel is usually between 2,000 yen and 4,000 yen, or about 18 to 36 dollars. When you think about how easy and comfortable they are, it's a great deal. Who stays in these wonderful hotels? In Japan, these are places where hard-working salarymen go to rest after a long night out. People can also use them if they miss the last train home or just want to get away from their normal routine. Some people even rent capsules for longer periods of time when they are going through hard times. But anyone looking for a fun and cheap place to stay could benefit from staying in a capsule hotel. Number 7. Love Hotels Let me tell you about the fascinating world of Japan's famed love hotels. These interesting and unusual motels offer hourly rates and an isolated hideaway for couples looking for romantic interactions. In Japan, privacy is a valuable commodity, with curious parents, nosy neighbors, and cramped apartments making it impossible to bring someone home. Love hotels overcome these issues by providing an intimate haven where couples may enjoy total privacy. These hotels can also provide a handy location to sleep or perhaps serve as your main source of accommodation while traveling to Japan. Love hotels have a long history, dating back to the 17th century during the Edo period. 
At that time, special inns and tea houses were built with secret entrances and tunnels, catering to the needs of prostitutes, their clients, and lovers seeking discretion. After World War II, small family-run lodgings called Tsurakomi Yado became popular, providing simple accommodations for those in need. Love hotels gained even more popularity with the introduction of automobiles in the 1960s, as Japanese homes had limited privacy. Married couples started frequenting love hotels for intimate moments, and these hotels quickly spread across Tokyo. In 1984, love hotels came under police jurisdiction due to a regulation law. To avoid this classification, new hotels toned down their extravagant designs. Love hotels also began targeting women as their customers. A study in 2013 showed that women made the majority of room selections in love hotels, the law was further amended in 2010, blurring the line between regular hotels and love hotels. Love hotels constantly adapt to meet regulations and attract customers. Hotel operators use various terms like romance hotel, fashion hotel, and couples hotel to stay trendy. Their cultural significance is evident as they were even added as emojis in Unicode 6.0. Number 6. Yuru Kiara Let's dive into the fascinating world of Japanese mascots known as Yuru Kiara. These adorable and sometimes peculiar characters are used to promote various things like towns, tourist attractions, and products in Japan. You can find them all over the country, and two of the most famous ones are Domo-kun, Nippon Hoso Kiyokai's mascot, and Kumamon from Kumamoto Prefecture, which have gained international recognition. Believe it or not, these mascots have a significant impact and bring in a lot of money. Kumamon alone generated an extra 124, 4 billion yen for Kumamoto in just two years. In Japan, there's a deep-rooted appreciation for cuteness, known as kawaii. It's not just for kids, either. Adults in Japan openly embrace cute things without much stigma. Today, we'll explore the power of cuteness that these mascots hold in Japan, also known as Yuru Kiara. They go beyond just being cute characters and take on meaningful roles and behaviors. Each of Japan's 47 prefectures has its own mascot, and it's not limited to just one per prefecture. For instance, Osaka has over 40 mascot representatives. These mascots play a vital role in promoting tourism within their respective regions. But how did mascots become so popular in Japan? Well, their popularity can be traced back to the emotional connection that the Japanese people have historically felt with non-human characters rooted in ancient polytheism and Japanese folklore. Additionally, a series of events sparked the current craze for mascots in Japan. In 1998, Nippon Hosokyo Kai organized a competition to design a character for their 10th anniversary, and the winner was Domo-kun. Since then, it has become Nippon Hosokyo Kai's official mascot and gained widespread popularity. Another early success story in the mascot world was Hello Kitty, whose rapid rise demonstrated the potential of mascots in Japan. In 2008, Hello Kitty became the official tourism ambassador for Japan. The achievements of both Domo-kun and Hello Kitty paved the way for the incredible popularity of mascot culture in Japan. So next time you come across a charming Yurukiara, remember that these mascots are not just cute characters. They represent a rich cultural phenomenon deeply ingrained in Japanese society, capturing hearts and bringing prosperity to their regions. Before moving along in the video, make sure you take a moment to click the like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to turn on the notifications if you want to be the first one to hear about our upcoming releases. Number 5. Rice Paddy Art you will be amazed by an incredible art form called rice paddy art. Originating in Japan, this unique art involves planting different types and colors of rice to create stunning images in a paddy field. It's like painting with nature. Let's dive into the history of this remarkable art form. In 1993, the people of Inakadate, a village in Aomori Prefecture, wanted to breathe new life into their community. They discovered that rice had been grown there for over two zero 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 years, and they decided to honor this heritage in a creative way. They transformed a rice field behind the town hall into a canvas. Using four different types of rice, both old and new varieties, they cultivated a gigantic picture in the field. To make it easier for everyone to enjoy the artwork, they even built a tall tower for a panoramic view. 
people were so captivated by the beauty of the art that over 200 000 visitors flocked to the village in 2006 alone. Inspired by Yanakadate's success, other villages like Yonazawa and Yamagata Prefecture started creating their own rice paddy art. It became a trend. Let's take a peek at some of the incredible designs that have graced the Inokadate rice fields over the years. They've depicted famous figures like Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, traditional Japanese paintings, iconic movie scenes from Gone with the Wind and Star Wars, and even legendary creatures like Yamada no Orochi. Every year, the villagers come together in April to decide on the design and the plan for the planting process. Computers are used to sketch out the designs and where which type of rice should be planted. The teamwork is definitely remarkable. If you think this art would have been saved from controversy, you are then definitely wrong, my friends. In 2008, there was a plan to include advertising logos in the artwork, but it caused a problem. Some villagers and the previous mayor strongly opposed the idea, threatening the land won't be leased if the ads were included, which ended up the removal of seedlings and the scrapping of advertising logos. Rice paddy art is a testament to the creativity, skill, and community spirit of the Japanese people. It's a visual feast that brings joy to thousands of visitors each year. So if you ever find yourself in Japan during the rice growing season, make sure to visit one of these incredible paddy fields and witness the awe-inspiring beauty of rice paddy art for yourself. Number 4. Diverse Kit Kats Kit Kat chocolate bars in Japan have become a sensation with over 300 unique flavors introduced since 2000. These flavors are often exclusive to Japan and not available elsewhere. Nestle, the company behind Kit Kat in Japan, successfully surpassed Maji Chocolate as the country's top-selling confectionery from 2012 to 2014. The brand's marketing campaign, which collaborated with Japan Post to sell Kit Kat bars in post offices, even won an award in 2010. The campaign encouraged people to associate the product's name with the phrase Kitokatsu, meaning you will surely win in Japanese. It became a symbol of good luck and was often sent as a charm to students before their university exams. Kit Kats were first introduced to Japan in 1973 through a partnership between British confectioner Round Trees and Japanese confectioner Fujiya. Since then, the brand has gained immense popularity and in 2014, it became the best-selling confectionery in Japan. The success of Kit Kat in Japan can be attributed to the introduction of unique flavors, with green tea being the first in 2004. These seasonal and regional flavors have become highly sought after due to the tradition of bringing back regional specialties as souvenirs. Nestle adopted a business model specifically for the Japanese market, producing smaller runs of flavors to better control costs. This approach worked well in Japanese convenience stores, where products frequently rotate off shelves. Kit Kat bars in Japan are made from milk chocolate produced at Nestle-owned factories in Himeji and Kasumigaura, using cacao beans primarily sourced from West Africa. The marketing of Kit Kats in Japan has capitalized on the coincidental association of the brand with good luck. The brand has become synonymous with good luck charms, particularly among students. Nestle's collaboration with the Japan Post allowed people to send Kit Kat bars with personalized messages, which quickly sold out this campaign, won awards, and further boosted the brand's popularity to cater to different tastes. Kit Kat opened specialty shops called the Kit Kat Chocolatory offering high-end products such as raspberry-infused dark chocolate and sake-flavored Kit Kats. Some flavors are limited to specific regions, while others are produced in limited quantities and saved for special promotions. Notable flavors include red bean, purple sweet potato, green tea, and soy sauce. Kit Kat's popularity in Japan continues to grow, and in 2018, Nestle opened a dedicated Kit Kat store at Namba Station in Osaka, further cementing its status as a cultural icon in the country. Number 3. Blue Traffic Lights Learn this. In Japan, the traffic lights might confuse you because they seem blue instead of green. But here's the deal. It's all about their language. Many years ago, the Japanese language only had words for four colors, black, white, red, and blue. So when they needed to talk about something green, they used the word for blue, which was ayo. This worked fine until the word for green, midori, came into use around the end of the first millennium. But even then, midori was considered a shade of ayo. 
This caused some confusion, and it still affects Japanese culture today. They play with words a lot, like using numbers instead of letters. For example, the number 39 means thank you in Japan. And when it comes to colors, they still sometimes call green things blue. It's like calling an apple blue or calling green bamboos blue bamboos. Now let's talk about traffic lights. Initially, Japan's traffic lights were really green, but they still called them AO. This didn't match international standards where green means go, so the government made a compromise in 1973. They decided to use the bluest shade of green possible, which satisfied international rules, but still allowed them to use the word AO. So the blue traffic lights in Japan are actually a very blue shade of green. The government wants us to know that it's still green enough to follow the rules, but blue enough to be called AO. Number two, girlfriend for rent. The world of girlfriend rentals in Japan, where you can experience the joy of having a girlfriend without commitment. It's like having a girlfriend on loan. Picture this. You find a service that offers this unique opportunity and voila, you're on your way to a girlfriend experience. The process is simple. You pay for the pleasure of her company, covering her expenses like drinks, meals, and transportation. Depending on your preferences and the duration of the rental, prices can range from 10, 000 yen for a two-hour rendezvous to 15, 000 yen for three hours of companionship. Some girls work as part-timers, balancing it with their full-time jobs. They understand the art of companionship and provide the attention you seek. So why do people choose to rent a girlfriend? For some, loneliness is the reason that makes them want to rent a girlfriend. They yearn for the warmth and closeness that comes from having a partner by their side. Others are hikikomori, young Japanese men who are incredibly shy and prefer to stay hidden away in their bedrooms rather than face the daunting task of dating. And there are even married men who seek companionship outside their marriages. Renting a girlfriend in Japan offers a chance for connection, companionship, and a taste of romance without the pressures of commitment. So why not dip your toe into the world of rented love and experience the thrill for yourself? Number one, no public trash can. In Japan, there are extremely few garbage cans in public spaces such as streets or retail malls. This is due to a major occurrence that occurred in Tokyo in 1995. A group of people belonging called AUM Shinrikyo caused a terrible terror attack on the city's subway. They released a dangerous gas called sarin, which is extremely poisonous and can kill people very quickly. This act shook the country, and the administration promised to prevent similar tragedies in the future. One method they chose was to remove public garbage cans. They believed that these bins could be used to hide dangerous things that could harm people. Also, collecting and disposing of garbage in public areas costs a lot of money. And the government didn't want to spend too much on this, but don't worry. There are still particular locations in Japan where you may locate garbage cans. They're common in parks, train stations, and public toilets. There are also special recycling bins next to vending machines where people can put their empty cans and bottles. So even though there aren't many garbage bins on the streets, people in Japan still care about keeping public spaces clean and protecting the environment. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.